Hello, my name is Anna Berber. I'm one of the hand and wrist surgeons working here with orthopedic specialists. Uh, today I have Nilla here who's going to be kindly helping us talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. So carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition which affects the hand. Uh, it affects both males and females. It's more common in females by three to one. Uh, what happens in carpal tunnel syndrome is the nerve, as it travels through uh, a tunnel in the wrist here, gets compressed. And through that compression, then some of the symptoms are, are become obvious. The tunnel itself is a, a tunnel in the wrist, and it's formed of the bones in the wrist, as well as some tough fibrous tissue over the top. The tunnel um, uh, has the nerve in it, but it also shares that space with the tendons of the, uh, of the hand. So it's quite a, quite a um, um, compact uh, space. Pressure on the nerve from uh, external causes such as um, lumps or bumps, a ganglion cyst, uh, or uh, pressure from swelling around the tendons. There are some conditions which uh, affect the nerve itself, which can also be associated with the condition, and um, can also be associated with uh, fractures through the radius as well. Uh, so for, for example, fractures through the distal radius. Uh, all in all, what happens is there's pressure on the nerve and pressure on the nerve leads to it's not functioning properly. And th then you get secondary effects such as numbness and tingling. So commonly patients will describe numbness and tingling in the distribution uh, of the nerve, which is uh, the thumb, the index middle and, and half of the ring finger. But this is very variable and varies from patient to patient. It's not unusual for patients to complain of um, numbness and tingling affecting the whole hand. Some patients also complain about numbness and tingling going up the arm into the forearm. Um, initial symptoms are tingling, which often wakes the patient at night. The patient's often shaking the hand, trying to um, bring back um, the feeling. So disturbed night sleep is very common. Um, as time goes on, it becomes more and more persistent and patients then complain about numbness. That numbness leads to a loss in the dexterity. So patients find it very difficult to pick up small objects, do tasks such as doing up buttons and zips. Um, as time goes on, the muscles start becoming involved as well. This classically involves the muscles at the base of the thumb. Um, there's one muscle which abducts the thumb. So Nil, if you don't mind, just bring your thumb just up that way. So this is a common muscle, the abductor pollicis brevis gets weakened. And sometimes I see patients with very advanced carpal tunnel where this is all wasted. And that then affects the patient's grip. Part of the assessment involves obviously inspecting the hand, looking at um, weakness or wasting of this muscle. Uh, I then assess for sensation. I do this quite simply by just assessing for soft touch and asking the patient to close her eyes, his or her eyes, and comparing both sides. So the, the right and the left. So I'd assess for sensation across the thumb, index, um, and, and, and through the hand. Um, often the palm is spared because there's a separate nerve that supplies it, so that helps um, helps us define the lesion. Um, then uh, I check for the strength in the muscle itself by asking the patient to what we call abduct the thumb, so lift the thumb up towards the ceiling and push against my finger. So if you lift your thumb up, push against my finger, and then and check the strength and feel the, the, the power in the muscle. Um, then there are some particular special tests. One is a classic test, which is called Phelan's test, and you ask the patient to bring both hands together and hold the hands together like this for a period of time and assess whether this triggers some of the symptoms. And if this does, this is one of the positive um, tests for carpal tunnel syndrome. I tend to perform this test, which is Durkin's test, a slightly modified version of that, whereby I put pressure over the carpal tunnel, lift the hand up, and then hold, hold the hand in this posture for a period of time and look for, again, symptoms uh, um, uh, such as tingling in the, in the, in the hand. Uh, Finally, there's another test where it involves a tap. This is called Tenel's tap test. And I tap along the nerve, going all the way up into the forearm. And often, if the nerve is particularly affected at a certain point, like the carpal tunnel, this would trigger tingling in the fingers. So a combination of tests increases the, the accuracy of the diagnosis. Following on from that, if I'm, if I'm suspicious of pressure onto the nerve from other structures, such as a lump or bump or swelling around the tendons, often do get an ultrasound scan, um, uh, but that's not typical. Uh, but commonly I tend to get nerve conduction tests, and, and a nerve conduction test involves um, a referral to a neurophysiologist. A neurophysiologist would apply little probes and stimulate the nerve through its course, often above the elbow, in the forearm, and into the hand. And that 
enables us to um, more accurately diagnose the condition. It also gives us an idea of how well some of the treatments are going to um, benefit the patient. I tend to classify carpal tunnel syndrome clinically as mild, moderate, severe, and that's, that's quite commonly done. Mild being occasional nighttime symptoms where the patient is woken up um, once or twice a week. Uh, becoming then more moderate carpal tunnel syndrome. And moderate carpal tunnel syndrome is uh, symptoms in the daytime as well. And patients often complain of carpal tunnel when they're holding an object for a long, prolonged period of time, steering wheel um, at their desk, on, at, the, at the keyboard. Um, these are all kind of daytime symptoms which, which are moderate in my um, practice. Then it becomes severe. Now, severe is such whereby the, the, the numbness and tingling has become established and it doesn't pass, it's, it's constantly there. Now, that becomes important because the longer we leave this untreated, this condition untreated, the harder it is for the nerve to recover. So the nerve becomes scarred over time and uh, uh, treatment is not as effective. So we would always recommend patients, especially with more severe symptoms, to, 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 to seek an opinion early. So for mild carpal tunnel syndrome, I'd recommend special exercises called nerve glide exercises, whereby I ask the patient to flex and extend the arm, especially with the arm extended, thank you, Nilla, uh, to extend. And, and then what this does, it stretches the nerve and it, and it helps it glide back and forth, improves the blood flow to the nerve. And there is some evidence to suggest that can help symptoms, especially in the early stages. The other thing I can do is, uh, I would do is provide a patient a splint with the wrist in neutral, not extended, so it has to be adjusted often. And this splint, worn at night time, can help with some of the nighttime symptoms. Uh, again, this is for mild carpal tunnel syndrome. Again, some modification of day-to-day -day activities, such as using a little silicon gel pad for the desk to stop pressure on the carpal tunnel is also useful. So we would discuss certain changes to the, to the working day, work practice. Um, then we'll talk about an injection. So typically we then offer patients a steroid injection, which is performed just into the carpal tunnel, uh, just here. And uh, uh, the steroid injection um, is very, very effective for early stage uh, carpal tunnel. We do sometimes find that it can wear off after a few months. It may need to be repeated or we may need to then escalate our treatment plan. Um, for intermediate or more severe carpal tunnel syndrome, we recommend um, uh, more, more um, uh, operative type of treatment. And in this case, I'd, I'd recommend an operation which is called a carpal tunnel decompression. It's a simple procedure, uh, which is very effective. Uh, involves a patient coming in as a day case. Um, often we would then perform this under local anesthesia, sometimes with some sedation if the patient wishes or requires. But essentially, a, a local anesthetic injection into the um, palm over the carpal tunnel. And it then involves a small two, 1.5 to 2 centimeter incision over the carpal tunnel. And we release the structures that apply pressure onto the nerve itself. Patient, uh, uh, patients are then, um, uh, um, recover, patients then recover over a couple of weeks, over which time I'd encourage lots of movement of the fingers and, and permission to get back to light activities, but nothing heavy. After two weeks, we'd, we'd assess the patient, remove the small sutures that are present holding the wound um, close to it to, to enable it to heal, um, and then begin uh, often some hand therapy, some massage over the area to, to minimize some of the discomfort from the operation itself. Patients find that almost immediately the tingling goes and, and, and with time the numbness can recover as well. Endoscopic or keyhole carpal tunnel decompression. The advantage of keyhole um, carpal tunnel decompression, it involves a small incision just on the side of the hand here, at the side of the wrist, about a centimeter. And we perform this using a special uh, technique or a special camera uh, and release the carpal tunnel from within. What this provides is very early return to, um, to work. Patients are able to wait there through the palm almost immediately. Patients find that they can get back to work that much quicker, much quicker than uh, an open carpal tunnel release. It's carpal tunnel syndrome related to pregnancy. Um, this can be quite common and um, it's often transient. It doesn't last beyond uh, the pregnancy period or it doesn't last beyond uh, delivery or arrival of the baby. Often we provide um, expectant mothers a steroid injection into the carpal tunnel just to um, tide them over that initial period to provide relief until baby arrives and symptoms then uh, settle. Uh, occasionally, um, patients do require a carpal tunnel release after the baby arrives, but this is managed on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.